Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon or what time you will watch this video. Uh, I made this video for you and please watch this video until the end and you will learn a lot from this. We will be talking about collecting and categorizing data. So we will be talking about data analysis and presentation. So if you're ready, let's start now, okay? In here, we will be talking about data analysis and presentation. These are the things that you will see later in our slides. Now, since you're ready, data analysis and presentation is our topic. And once again, my name is Teacher Guapo. You can search my name in YouTube channel and you can learn there about mathematics for grade two, grade three, grade one. If you have friends, you can share with them. Now, data analysis and presentation. Now, these are the objectives in this topic. You must read data from pictographs or pictogram. You must know how to collect data about pupils and their environment or it depends upon the data that we'll be collecting later on. And then to read data from bar graphs if we have it here. And then here we will focus about data analysis and presentation. Now, in your book, you will see this one on page 200 about collecting and categorizing data. It says here, sometimes says we can ask them one by one because they want to know or they want to find out the number of classmates that they have who likes chocolate ice cream. So Sam says, there are too many of them if we will ask them one by one. I think it is better to give them survey forms. So first they did is they give the survey forms to all the pupils in the class, okay? Now, the students can write their names in here and then they will just tick in the suitable column. For example, they like the chocolate ice cream, so they will tick here. If they like strawberry ice cream, they tick here. Or green, green tea ice cream, they will just tick in here. And then after that, after giving the, the form, they must collect the forms so that they will know how many students like the chocolate ice cream. And, and um, some child says that there are 38 pupils in our class, he told to some. And then we have to collect 38 survey forms. And then some says, we will know the results after we have organized the data. Okay, so they, organize the data, the sort the data and classify the data by using tally method. Tally method, they will just, uh, some will read, okay, Sally likes strawberry. And then some child will make, will write one. And then Jace likes chocolate ice cream. And then some child will write another one here in chocolate ice cream and so on. Now it shows here that 13 pupils like chocolate ice cream. As you can see here, one line represents one. So if there are five, so it represents five. So five, another five, and another three. So that is 13. So tables make the reading of data faster and easier. So they found out here that there are 13 pupils like chocolate ice cream, right? Now, here, we can see in here in the, organize, the organizing data in a table that nine pupils or nine students like strawberry ice cream. Can you see it here? Ah, nine pupils like strawberry ice cream. And there are 10 pupils likes green tea ice cream. 10 pupils. How about the chocolate ice cream? How many pupils like chocolate ice cream? Uh, you can see here in the table that there are 13 pupils like chocolate ice cream and six pupils like mango ice cream. This is mango, this is chocolate ice cream, this is green tea ice cream, this is strawberry ice cream. So how many pupils like strawberry ice cream? Nine. How many pupils like green tea ice cream? 10. Chocolate ice cream? 13. Mango ice cream? Six pupils. 
Okay, it's easy, right? Now here, in your book on page 202, 202, you will see that Aaron wants to know the favorite sports of the pupils of class 3A. So he asked all the pupils of class 3A to pin their names under their favorite sports on the class notice board. So you can see here, the pupils write their names here. So Zach likes swimming. So Zach write his name in here. And then Suda likes swimming. Suda write his name here. Mani, Kanda, Mali, Sori. So these are the pupils that likes swimming. And here in badminton, you see here Niran, Kamon, Siri, Ari, Chet, Wandi, Aaron, no one. So these are the pupils who likes badminton. And students or pupils like football is here. And students or pupils who likes ping pong. Yeah. Now let us answer the question here. Huh? You see here that there are 11 pupils likes swimming. How about badminton? 12, football, six, ping pong, seven, okay? Now, which is the most popular sports? Swimming, badminton, football, or ping pong? Which is the most popular sport? The most popular sports here has the biggest number, and which is number 12. And this is, what sport? It's badminton. So we write here, badminton. Okay, in letter A. In letter B, how many pupils are there in class 3A? Now, how many pupils are there all together? So we will just add them all. In swimming, there are 11. In badminton, there are 12. In football, there are six. In ping pong, there are seven. So if we will add all these numbers, it will give us an answer of 36. So 36 pupils in class 3A. Now in letter B, in your book, okay, letter B, you can see it on page 204, 204, reading and writing pictograms, reading and writing pictograms. I know that you learned this one when you were in grade two, right? When you were in grade two, I taught you already about this. Do you still remember how to read pictograms? Now, if you don't know, let me tell you again. Here, the pictograms below shows the number of boys born in the month of January to June. So number of boys born from January to June. So in January, you can see here five pictures. In February, there are three pictures of boys. In March, you can see here eight pictures. In April, there are nine pictures. In May, there are six. In June, there are seven. Okay, there are seven. So always remember, each picture represents 20 boys. Again, each picture of the boy represents 20 boys. Now, based on the picture or the pictogram, we know that in January, there are 100 boys were born. 100 boys were born because there are five pictures. So five times 100 or 100 times, I mean, uh, 20 boys times five or five times 20, it will give us an answer of 100. So in January, there are 100 boys were born. How about in February? There are three pictures. So three times 20 is equals to 60. Now, if we will total all the boys were born from January to June, we will give us, it will give us an answer of 760 boys. So in six months from January to June, there are 760 boys were born. Okay, 760 boys. So what is the difference between the number of boys born in the month of May and June, what is the difference? Since May has 140 boys and in June has 120 boys, so we will subtract 140 minus 
120 is equal to 20 boys. So most of the boys were born in the month of April. Month of April. Now here, page 205. The pictogram below shows the number of houses for rent in different areas in January. Now, number of houses for rent in different areas. In Eco City, you can see here three pictures of houses. In Serenia City, there are four pictures of house. Park Villa, there are five. Rose Garden, there are two. Crystal Garden, there are six. Now, don't forget that each picture represents 50 houses. Again, each picture represents 50 houses. So we will just multiply it into 50. For example, in Eco City, three, right? Three pictures, so three times 50. So that is 50 plus 50 plus 50 is equal to 150. Now here, you can see here 150 houses in Eco City. Now here in the next one, there's a box. Based on the pictogram, we know that blank has 200 houses for rent. What city? It is Serenia City. Serenia City has 200 houses for rent. How about in Park Villa? How many houses for rent in Park Villa? So in Park Villa, there are 250 houses. Why 250? Because in Park Villa, there are five pictures of houses. So five times 50 is equal to 250. How about in Rose Garden? In Rose Garden, there are two pictures. So two times 50 is 100. How about in Crystal Garden? In Crystal Garden, there are six pictures. So six times 50 is equal to 300. Very good. Now, what is the total? What is the total of houses for rent in these five areas in January? Okay, the answer is 1,000. Okay, 1,000. In Eco City is 150. In Serena City, 200 in Park Vela, 250 in Rose Garden, 100 in Crystal Garden, 300. If we would add all those, it will give us an answer of 100 houses for rent. Okay. Now here, drawing pictograms. Based on the data below, you will draw a pictogram showing the number of bottles of jam exported in five days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now, in step number one, pick a symbol or picture that accurately represents your item. So since it is a jam, okay, it's a bottles of jam, so you draw a jam. So you will decide the number of bottles of jam the symbol represents. For example, one, you can see here, one, represents or one bottle represents 100 bottles of jam. So step number three, calculate the number of symbols to be drawn for each month. For example, Monday, 800, right? So why is it 800? You draw here eight symbols only, 800, eight symbols. Why eight symbols? Because one is equals to 100. So one, 100, two, 200, three, 300, four, 400, 5, 500, 6, 600, 7, 700, 8, 800. So 8 symbols is equal to 800 bottles of jam. So only 8 symbols. If you draw 7 symbols, that means 700. 9 symbols, 900. If 6 symbols, 600. 11 symbols, 1,100. So that's it. It's very easy, right? So you can see here also the title. When you make or when you draw a pictograms, don't forget the title, title of the pictogram. 
and then symbol or pictures for your pictogram, okay? And then the last one, you write here the key to the pictogram. For example, each bottle represents, you can see here the bottle, each bottle represents 100 bottles of jam because you will make a, or you will draw a pictograms later. Now here, let's answer this one. The pictogram below here, and you can see here that shows the number of candies received by four pupils. What are the names of the pupils? Jessie, Jesse, Kim, Pim, and Hannah. Again, Jesse, Kim, Pim, and Hannah. Now here, you will see the candies. Now each candy represents 20 candies, or each picture of candies represents 20 candies. Now let us answer here. Who had 120 candies? What do you think? Who had 120 candies? Now it's Kim. Why? Kim has, if you look at here, Kim has six candies, right? So you will count by 20. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. So Kim has 120 candies. Who received the least number of candies? When you say least, has the smallest number, smallest number of candies. Okay, it's PIM. How about greatest? So the keyword here is least. Here is greatest. Greatest means has the most number of candies or receive greatest number of candies. It's Jesse. Okay, it's Jesse. Why? How many candies did Jesse receive? How many candies did Jesse receive? Because Jesse received the greatest number of candies. So Jesse received eight candies, right? So eight times 20, you will see there are eight pictures. Eight times 20 is equal to 160 candies. Now, very easy, right? So we will just multiply into 20 because one picture represents 20 candies so it gives us an answer of 160 candies now letter e how many candies did pim receive because pim received the smallest or the least number of candies now how many candies did pim receive as you can see there you will see three pictures of candies right so you multiply it must be three not six this one it's not this one is not a six, it must be number three. If you write six, it's wrong, okay? It must be number three. Change this one into three. So three times, three times, okay. Three times 20 right here, three, okay? You write there, three. Three times 20 is equal to 60 candies, 20 plus 20 plus 20 is equals to 60. Now, how many candies were there in total all together, all together? Ah, if we will add all together, there are 440 candies because 160 from Jesse, 120 from Kim, 60 candies from Pim, and 100 candies from Hannah. So, total of 440 candies. Now, how many more candies did Jesse receive compared to the number of candies received by Hannah? So Jesse received 160, Hannah received 100. So we will just minus, subtract. So it will just give us an answer of 60 candies. 160 minus 100 is equal to 60, so 60 candies. Okay, now here, look at this one. The pictogram below here shows the number of shirts sold from January to May, start from January up to May. And each shirt represents 50 shirts. Each picture represents 50 shirts. Now let's try this, letter A. How many shirts were sold in January? Huh? How many shirts? One picture shows 50. So that is five times 50 is equals to 250 shirts. Which month achieved the highest, highest sale of shirts? 
it's month of April. And what was the total number of shirts sold in five months, all from January to May, January, February, March, April, and May? The five months. What was the total number of shirts sold in the five months? So in five months, that is 250 in January, 200 in February, 100 in March, 350 in April, 300 in May. So that is in total of 1,200 in shirts. Now in letter D, how many shirts were sold in the first two months? First two months, that means January and February. So that is 250 plus 200. It means it equals to 450 shirts. Now, what is the difference between the number of shirts sold in April and May? Difference. When we say difference, you, you need to use minus. So 350 minus 300 because April has 350 and May has 300. So 350 minus 300 is equals to 50 shirts. And how many more shirts were sold in January than in March? So we need to use minus. In January, there are 250, and in March, only 100. So 250 minus 100 is equal to 150. Okay, so that's it. It's very easy. Now, this is for your homework, okay? For your homework, answer pages 203, 209, and 211, okay? Don't forget your homework. Now, don't forget this one. These are your homeworks, okay? Thanks for watching. God bless everyone. See you in next class or next video. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned from me today and keep safe, my dear students. Always drink water and eat vegetables, do some exercise, okay? See you, goodbye.